Welcome to C Language Mechanism for Error Handling and Deferred Cleanup. Uh, I'm Robert Secord, and my co-author on this paper was Jens Gusted. So I'm a techni technical director at NCC Group. I work on developing and delivering secure coding training classes in Java, C, C++, and C Sharp. I also do a lot of code security, uh, code security review work for various Fortune 500 companies. And I lead NCC Group's research efforts into reducing vulnerabilities at scale and open source software. I'm also a long-term member of WG14, which is the C Standards Committee. So this talk is about a defer mechanism that uh, we've uh, introduced uh, to the C Standards Committee and for which we are currently developing a technical specification. Uh, the purpose of the defer mechanism is to restore a previously known property or invariant that's altered during the processing of a code block. So this is very useful for paired operations where one operation is performed at the start of a code block and the, uh, the paired operation needs to be performed before that code block exits regardless of how the code block exits. So this pattern is very common in uh, resource management uh, such as allocating and deallocating uh, memory or opening and closing files, uh, synchronization, uh, creating uh, mutexes and um, unlocking mutexes, and uh, doing things like um, outputting balanced strings. So for example, outputting an HML tag uh, followed by a, outputting a closing tag, anything that has to be balanced. So resource management is a um, is a driving use case for this technology. Uh, so examples of C standard library functions that acquire resources include um, uh, functions that will allocate uh, storage, including malloc, calloc, realloc, uh, and even functions like strdupe and strndupe. Um, functions that allocate streams, such as fopen and freopen, um, temp file, um, thread create, uh, thread specific storage and uh, conditional variables uh, as well as mutexes. So allocating, res uh, allocating resources and resource management has uh, various security concerns, one of which is denial of service tax. So these can occur when user users are unable to access information systems, devices, or other network resources as a result of an attack. So denial of service attacks frequently take the form of a resource exhaustion attack that make a uh, computer resource insufficiently available to the application. Uh, an example of this might be that an attacker will cause an application to use up all the dynamically allocated storage available so that any subsequent attempts to allocate storage will fail. And that, of course, can significantly degrade uh, or, or, or just stop the um, the uh, functioning of your application. Another class of vulnerability is a uh, double free vulnerability where um, storage is released uh, more than once without an interim um, reallocation. And uh, this particular vulnerability can be exploited to execute arbitrary code with the permissions of the vulnerable process. So a very common source of this vulnerability is resources that are released during error handling, and then again during normal processing. And this uh, can happen quite a lot because uh, frequently these error handling uh, paths aren't as thoroughly tested as sort of the, the greenfield normal uh, code processing. So the defer statement uh, uh, defers the execution of a deferred statement until the uh, to the end of the uh, the guarding block, the deferred statement is sequenced sequenced in a last in last out. Sorry, deferred statement is sequenced in a last in first out uh, LIFO order uh, after all statements just before the the guarded block terminates. A block can contain uh, multiple deferred statements. Uh, and of course, they'll be sequenced in LIFO order when the block exits. So to make this clearer with an example, here we've got a, a simple function that returns an error no t type. And we're going to start by 
uh, allocating some storage uh, with a call to malloc and once that storage returns we uh, check to make sure the allocation has exceeded if it does not we return uh, e no mem and at this point there are no deferred statements because no resources have been allocated but in the following line uh, once we see that um, we've successfully allocated the resource we'll call defer in order to ensure that free is called on the memory reference by p before this function terminates we then allocate a subsequent resource uh, uh, by calling malloc again and assigning uh, that storage to the pointer q again we check that if q um, if, if that allocation has been unsuccessful we'll return enomem if it has been successful we'll call defer uh, to free that storage again before the function exits then finally we create a uh, mutex lock and if that um, if that lock is uh, unsuccessfully created and returns thread error we'll return thread error otherwise if if it is successfully created we'll defer a call to mutex unlock so following all this, we now have all the resources uh, that we need in order to provide our, uh, our operations. And so the operations here will occur within the, uh, the locked mutex, and they'll have access to the memory reference by Q and the reference memory by, uh, and the memory reference by P. So when, uh, when this block, when this function uh, finally exits, uh, regardless of uh, the mechanism used, um, all of the resources that have been uh, allocated will be released in LIFO order. So uh, the, the lock will be unlocked, the mutex will be unlocked, the storage referenced by Q will be freed, and then the storage referenced by P will be freed. So before uh, normal processing of a termination event, such as a call to exit or uh, thread exit, uh, all the deferred statements for the current thread will be executed by unwinding the stack. There's also a panic and recover mechanism that are being proposed. The primary purpose of defer is to manage this release of resources to make sure that you know, each resource is freed once and only once, uh, regardless of how uh, how a block of code exits. Uh, the panic recover mechanism is primarily responsible for error handling. So panic recover, recover is similar to throw and catch in C++, while defer is similar to resource acquisition is initialization or array in uh, C++. So a panic may potentially occur as a result of a trap, such as an invalid arithmetic operation, such as a divide by zero, uh, or the result of the programmer explicitly invoking uh, either of the, the two panic macros that are defined. The panic macro indicates an abnormal execution condition and causes the caller stack to unwind. Uh, during the unwinding of the caller stack, all the deferred statements that have been registered in that stack frame will be uh, executed. There's also a recover function uh, that returns an integer value that indicates the reason a deferred statement is executing. Uh, if the return value is zero, that means that the execution of the deferred statement is a result of a regular termination of the guarded block, uh, for example, by uh, calling exit or thread exit or uh, just a normal um, return mechanism. Or the, um, the processing of deferred statements will, be, will continue as if the recover function had not been called because we're simply uh, rewinding out through a normal uh, termination process. If the recover function returns a non-zero value, the thread or program is in panic mode. Uh, so processing of deferred statements will stop with the termination of the current deferred statement and responsibility for further handling will then pass to the application. Uh, so the application can try to recover at that point or can do a partial recover and then um, trigger a new panic by uh, invoking the panic macro potentially with a different um, 
with a different error code. So that's all I have to say today about uh, the defer mechanism. If you'd like to find out more, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at RCS uh, or LinkedIn uh, or send me email at my uh, NCC group uh, address. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the talk.